name is Sandra and um, I love to have conversations and talk about life, faith, um, relationships, and all that good stuff, right? So today, I want to share <laughs> my delivery story with you guys and after delivery i know interesting stuff yes before i get into this video if you're not yet a subscriber go ahead and click that subscribe button um i'm still struggling to get my subscribers up it's either i'm the problem or you're the problem i don't know we'll figure it out as we go <laughs> but anyway um so i did have my baby or um november 11 20 20 right 2020 was the year oh yes we all felt it um my daughter came at i believe 8 19 a.m judge me if you want gosh there are some people that are like oh my gosh you don't remember the exact day the time the blah blah however um so like i mentioned in my last video i have had a myomectomy that's a video that I still need God, Holy Spirit, to lead me on when to talk about that and post that. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> um, so I've had a I had a myomectomy before, and um, um, so when you know I was getting closer. Oh, at the beginning of my. Um, pregnancy my doctor already just spoke to me and said you know you're gonna have to do a um, c-session so um, and then I remembered when after my surgery the doctor at that time did tell me that you know um, because of this you will have to have your kids with c-session so I already kind of had that in mind so um and it didn't bother me like I was just like yo as long as I can have kids as long as I can deliver I, I think I'm fine right um so now it became a reality because at that time it was just the same but now it's like, okay you're pregnant you're gonna have a c-session right um so the positive of that was that um whenever I watch a YouTube video about c-session they will say okay a c-session is a myomectomy with a baby coming out of you so it, it gave me a little bit of comfort because it's like okay I know what that felt like hell but <laughs> um but it's not new right um so when um we first set up the appointment my doctor said oh it's um 5 30 and uh, in the evening um that the appointment is gonna be and i was like oh i don't like that first of all i kind of wanted i don't know why i wanted the 16th of november i think because i knew that i would at least go up to um i think um 39 weeks that week um, but my doctor was like, you know what? I don't want to take my chances. We're going to have to stop at 37 and a half. I was just like, wow, okay. You know, and I think a part of me was fighting that because it's like society. Yeah, there they are. There they are. They're always in your ear. They're always on your neck. Um, so, um, um, so when my doctor told me the day we discussed the dates and stuff, my husband was not there. And that was another weird thing about COVID, right? I had to attend most of my appointments by myself. My husband was always in the car outside. Um, so um, so my doctor was like, okay, it's gonna be the um, 11th um, and it's in the evening. I was like, oh, I don't like that. I kind of want it in the morning. And he was like, oh, I feel the same way. Um, so when I got, back to my husband I, I was discussing with him and he said look I don't care <laughs> my husband is a very interesting person if you ever get to meet him and you guys talk you would uh, definitely understand um why um and the way he thinks he thinks very differently and I love it I, I love love it most of the time let me be honest um he was like hey at the end of the day as long as you are alive and then the baby's alive that's what matters i don't care how it comes out right and you know that made me feel good and that made me feel you know um better about the situation and stuff so i told the doctor yeah 5 30 is fine let's go let's do it um but then that actually then changed um because he found a slot for me in the morning so um when um so i had to get to the hospital so it was um the appointment was for 
um, 7.30 um, and I had to be at the hospital at 5.30. Mind you now, that same day or that same week, we were moving to a new place. So my husband literally like moved the entire house the day before um, the arrival of our daughter. It felt bad for him, it looked like a zombie. But um, I was like, yeah, you're coming with me to the delivery room. He's like, oh no, your mom can just go with you. I was like, oh no, my mom did not do this. Me and you did it. <laughs> so let's go. I got there at 5.30, they did all the checks. Oh my God, there was, it was just like questions and so many repeated questions. Hey, do you have any, any disease in your family? Do you have um, high blood pressure? Do you have this, you have that, history. I'm like, why can't you just copy and paste what the last person just did? It's the same question, right? So I guess maybe that's a procedure to just make sure that they're um, you know, following everything, right? Um, so then I um, you know, got willed into the room and the doctor, I guess he thought like this was like a plus. He's like, yeah, this is the first time we're using this room. It's a newly um, renovated room. I'm like, yes, yeah, that's supposed to make me like excited. I don't know. But I was just like, okay, great. Like, let's get the baby out. <laughs> so, um, um, so then, um, so they said, okay, the anesthesiologist, I don't know if I'm saying that right, is gonna give me the um, epidural. So, and I'm like, okay, why is my husband not here? So they, I told my husband to wait outside. I guess they were bringing him, bring, they were gonna bring him in um, after uh, a time or whatever, I don't know. So we, so I get in, I said, so the anesthesiologist, gosh, that word, then um, comes in and he goes, you know, just sit up for me. I sat up, he goes, you're just gonna feel a pinch, right? So I guess put in the needle in my back. He's like, you're gonna feel a, a, a no. It's a, it's a you're gonna feel like 10 dots on your back so I'm like okay so I'm thinking it's like a marker I don't know and I start to feel like needles I'm like what the hell so I get that I was like ow 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 um because I don't my tolerance for pain after that last surgery is like way down so so then he does that and then he goes oh you're gonna feel one big one now and he puts that thing oh my god I think I screamed so loud um he goes wow he's like okay okay it's it's fine now it's fine now oh and before that he said i'm not gonna feel anything now after the injection from my, my chest from my chest down right so then i said okay so as i'm laying there i'm trying to raise my arms and my arms could not respond to me so then i start to freak out i'm like um you said i was not gonna be able to move from my chest down but now I didn't think that included my arms so what's going on so I started freaking out I started getting anxious so so then um, freaking out getting anxious and that's how I passed out right so I guess they realized okay this girl is gonna you know just not calm down and that's how I um, you know um, So by the time I woke up, I heard, it's a girl. On that day, my husband was just jumping because I later realized that he really wanted a girl. Um, it, it is just a blessing. And my daughter, she's so adorable and she's growing so gracefully. And that's because me and my um, husband, we didn't check out the gender. So it was like, it's a girl, right? Um, and the videos I had watched, about c-sessions was like i was people were like oh you will feel when they're tugging the baby out of you i didn't feel any of that i am grateful um and um then i see my husband there and before i like pre before that like before i started freaking out i only had my mask on because it was covid everybody had to have a mask by the time i woke up i had like oxygen in my nose so i figured okay they you know knocked me out um and i don't know if i'll be able to get my husband's side of the story because i think that would be, actually be very interesting to um to hear but um you know thank god you know baby came at 819 at 6.8 pounds um she looked big on picture but she was really small um 
you know, she was just so beautiful. I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe this is my child, right? So then, um, went into the recovery room, right? Where everybody that just had surgeries in. I'm laying there. I start to feel so cold. Okay, before that, like I told my husband, I was like, as soon as they take the baby out of me, just follow them. Wherever they're going, follow them, right? But my husband was more concerned about me because when they took out baby, then they have to sew me up, right? Um, so I was like, what are you doing here? Go <laughs> with them. He goes, no, babe. That's it. I said, I said, go with them. Just follow them. Um, I mean, they have good security, but I was not just, I was just like, no, I'm going to make sure my child is okay. So he went with them and then he came back to me um, in the recovery room and I started to feel so cold. Oh my gosh, I was so cold. They had to give me like three heated blankets um, and then my body started to itch. Oh my gosh, um, my body started to itch. Um, so by the time I was able to um, feel warm, they were like, okay, it's because of the epidural um the reaction or whatever I, I don't know what it was i didn't hear that in anybody's youtube video so i was super cold and then they put blankets on me and then after like maybe like 30 minutes i started to feel better so then they transferred me to my room so as i'm getting transferred to my room i'm like um so where's my baby where's my baby i just kept asking where's my baby they're like oh she's in a the nursery they're doing this they're... i'm like so when am i gonna see her so i'm like anxious like where am i gonna see her when i was when am i gonna see her um so my husband i'm like i kept looking at my husband like yo what are you doing here <laughs> like go and stand next to the room and watch the baby i think i think he was getting upset at me um but yeah so finally they bring my baby in you know um i'm just like you know wild and the nurse is like you know if your body's itching um let's just give you benadryl I'm like, is there a daytime one or this one's going to make me sleep? She's like, oh, it's going to make you sleep, right? And I'm like, um, no, um, you're not going to give me. <laughs> so I'm like, no, you're not going to give me, um, what is it, um, um, Benadryl because I want to keep staring at my child. I don't want to fall asleep. Guys, when you're having a baby, when the nurses are telling you to go to sleep, just go to sleep because you need it. Um, but I was not trying to go to sleep. I was like, I'm just going to be staring at my baby, right? So, um, you know, that was great. Um, <laughs> so then another thing was anybody that wanted to come into the room, I was like the police officer. Like, who's that? Who's there? Like, I was so protective. Oh, my God. I didn't even know I could be this protective over anything. Um, so I was just like, who's coming into the room? Who? And then... Um, the nurses, like I'll ring the bell because I had C-section, it's hard to get up. And if they didn't come, you know, faster, like I will force myself, like your know, women, like the power that comes from within you is amazing. So I will make myself get up, right? This is after like five hours, no, maybe six hours after surgery, um, I'll make myself get up and go pick up my baby. Um, and then, you know all that and then they you know I, I gave her breast and then my milk was not coming out as much it was just a little bit and I just kept putting her mouth but she latched on so fast which was amazing because I really wanted to experience breastfeeding so it was really good when she latched on quickly um my husband was so tired he was so sleepy so then he went home slept for a little bit and nobody can come visit me because it was COVID right um so it was just me sometimes some hours in the hospital with my baby which i was okay with but i wished it was like you know when it was normal when people would come to the hospital and see you and stuff like that um but that was not the case but it was still a joyful time um and then they were like oh you're gonna be here for three days i was like no i want to be here for two i want to go home and be with family so um you know being that people could not you know um come I was excited to go home. We are so going I went. home. <laughs> Got our cute baby. Jesus, you're awesome. Thank you, Abba Father. So I went home and then it was great, you know, family and all that. Um, but yeah, my delivery was, it wasn't crazy, but I just think it was interesting, like the little events that was going on. But one thing that I want to mention is 
the fact that in this day and age, um, women still get um, looked down upon when they have C-section. I, I, I mean, you know, even during this video, I was like, okay, wait, is this something I want to put out there? But like, heck yeah, like having a C-section is not a walk in the park. I don't even have to prove that to anybody. Having surgery is not a walk in the park. Um, so even like, you know, even women that had um, natural birth, would be like, oh, you had C-section. Oh, so, um, and then another thing that I noticed was um, somebody did call my husband from back home, Nigeria. And I noticed that the conversation she was trying to have was like, when did my labor start? When did I get to the hospital? And, I, and then my husband was like, trying to understand why all this questioning, right? So when he got off the phone, I said, she wants to find out if I had natural birth. Um, and he was like, what? I was like, yeah. And another thing that happened to me that actually this one did make me feel some type of way was um, I called somebody. No, somebody called me after they heard that I had a baby. And, you know, she was like all excited on the phone and congratulating me. And then the next question was, um, so which one did you have? Did you have a normal, normal birth? I said, yes, because just because I had a C-session does not make my delivery abnormal am i alive yes is my baby alive yes are we both healthy yes so what's abnormal there right most likely she didn't even think that that was something she shouldn't have asked but it's just how um condescending could come off when you know women talk about c-session right and then some people will say stuff like oh you had a good you had a c-session like i mean i guess pushing is not easy either but um, C-session is not easy either <laughs> so that's why like I'm like this stereotype of you know women that had their baby with um, natural the natural which is the push you know feeling like they're better than women that have C-session like if we try to compare and contrast like I don't even think there's a need for that right um but at the end of the day, I, I just want to debunk that idea of, you know, I had natural, you had C-session. Like, who cares? Is, is the baby here? Like, I mean, you have people, like, praying for this miracle. So I don't think I'm even going to try to um, go, go back and forth with anybody regarding that matter. Um, and, yeah, like, it was a blessing. Um, it still is a blessing. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe and um, let me know if of anything you guys want to know about right um, all right guys take care talk to you next time bye